Hi everybody, today I'm gonna to show you a really fun project in PhotoP and it's called the stretch pixel effect. So we're gonna take a picture of a person jumping or stretching or running and we're gonna turn them into something that looks like this. Here are a few that I've done and uh, these are the types of things that you can do. Look for someone with outstretched arms or legs, some kind of extension and this makes it a really fun project. We're gonna do this right now in PhotoP. So what I need you to do is go to photop.com and it looks something like this. We're going to find an image. Um, there's a lot of free sites that you can use like pexels.com. Go in there, grab a photo. Once it's downloaded, you can open it from your computer. We're going to do this little girl jumping and let's get started. First thing we've got to do is remove her from her background. So in PhotoP, if you look for the little bean, you'll see the quick selection tool. That's where we're going. This morning I couldn't find the tool and I found that it was nestled under the rectangular selection tool. So if for any reason you're not seeing this, check under this button. That's where I found mine this morning, but it's right, it should be on your toolbar, but it's right here. So quick selection, okay. I'm gonna zoom in. So for my computer, that's command plus, plus, plus. There's also this little plus button that you can zoom in on, on an area. I'm gonna scoot it down. Okay, so what I'm doing is with this selection, quick selection tool, you will see a brush. Now mine looks really tiny right now. It's a little tiny circle, but if I grab my bracket keys right next to the letter P like Paul on the keyboard, the right bracket key makes that bigger, the left bracket key makes it smaller. You want to click inside of her body. Now, if we're clicking along and we accidentally grab something that doesn't, that shouldn't be there, like it's actually doing a pretty good job right now. Pre previously, it was grabbing leaves and other things. Um, if you want to check it, hit the refine edge button. And what this does is it opens this in the new dialog box. This is your photo. And then over here, it shows you your selection. And so you can click on a part that we want to check on. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to click on, I think I have to click on the actual photo rather than the selection. And I can see from here that her shoes are kind of missing. So if I click on the white box, now my brush is really, really big. I'm going to shrink that down with my bracket keys. I can paint over that part of the foot that I want to retain. And as you will see, as that selection kind of loads, it starts filling in over here. Now, this part can take a little while. If you want to remove something, you get the black one out and you can remove it. So it's a matter of clicking on the white to add in the black to remove. And the gray is good for going around hair. Now I'm gonna just switch this into a different tab because I've already been working on it. Sometimes this takes a little longer than what I wanna show you. We wanna move, move forward. Um, I'm gonna grab this black brush because again, like I added something to that just to kind of show you how to remove something from that selection. So if you get some extra scenery or other things out there that you don't really want, you can do that. So I can grab my, oops, oh my goodness. Command Z will undo if you screw up, just like I did. There we go. Okay, I'm just trying to back out of it so I can see where I'm at. And I'm a little bit frozen right now. All right, if you've got it the way you want it, hit new layer. It's gonna put it on a new layer and there's a little okay button right next to it. Okay, there she is. She looks pretty good. All right, so we've got her cut out. Now, we've just spent all this time and now we're gonna add another background layer. We want her on a white piece of paper, but we want her separate from the paper. Down at the bottom of the layers panel, so you should see layers. If you are not seeing it, you should see L-A-Y right in this area somewhere. Go get your layers out, we need to see that. At the bottom, there's a little tiny piece of paper that says new layer. We're gonna take that layer and we're gonna fill it with white. Now, the easiest way to fill something with white is if you hold the command button on a Mac or a control button on a PC and you hit the delete key. What that does is it fills it with the white that's over here. 
Now you should probably hit the letter D to default your colors back to black and white if they're not there already. D will default those colors. So command delete or option or alt delete, that switches that back and forth between those two. So I just did command and delete. If that doesn't work for you, you can try option delete. And if that if neither of those work, you can go here to the gradient tool, get the paint bucket out. You just have to switch these colors around so white's on top and drop your paint. Okay. So we've got a, a paint filled layer. I'm gonna drag it underneath the background layer. So she's on top, she's got a white piece of paper underneath her. Okay, now this comes the fun part. We are going to choose a section of this photo to select to make that circle background. Make sure your background photo is selected. This is the, the cutout of the little girl. I'm gonna go over here to the rectangular selection tool. And what this does is let me drag out a selection. I'm gonna drag through a part of the photo. I could take it all the way to the ground if I wanted to, but I think I'm just gonna take a little skinny strip. I wanna catch all of those colors from her hat. And as I zoom in, you can kind of see we're gonna get a little bit of that denim color. We're gonna get a little bit of this. So we're gonna take that strip. now. It doesn't have to be as wide oops, as that. It can be really skinny, but this is, in Photoshop, I'm able to grab one, one single pixel, but here I'm just gonna drag a little skinny line and something like this. Okay, so it's selected. Now, if I hit Command or Control J, like jump, Command J, what that does is it jumps it onto a new layer. I'm gonna hide her layer for a minute, just turn off the visibility. And you can see, there's my little skinny strip that I just cut. I'm gonna go up here to my move tool and I wanna make sure that my transform controls are on. Now I've got some anchor points. And if I grab and stretch, I wanna pull that all the way across my canvas. Let's see if I can back out so I can see where I'm at. I'm just gonna take it and drag it. And if you feel like it's not wide enough, you can stretch it taller too. So I might pull it up just a little bit. We want to leave some white along the edges because that will um, create more white around the edges of your circle later. Okay, so we hit the check mark to set that. That looks good. Now let's turn on the visibility. She's hiding behind here, so we've got to move her to the top of the stack. There she is. I can use the move tool and I can move her around, but that doesn't matter as much right now. We're going to fix it later. Now, this by itself is kind of a cool effect. You could leave it like that, but we're going to warp it with a filter effect. So I'm going to make sure my layer two is selected. That is the, the stripey color layer. Make sure that's selected. And we're going up here to filter, distort, and we're going to polar coordinates. Filter, distort, polar coordinates, and it gives this little box that shows up. You can see it, it's there. We are gonna be able to move things around a little bit, but uh, we wanna make sure it's rectangular to polar rather than the other way. That doesn't look good. So make sure it says rectangular to polar and we just say, okay. Now we've got, because the transform controls are on, I can see the handles of this thing and I can drag it. I can also stretch it a little wider to make it look a little bit more round rather than oval. I want this circle to be about the size of her at outstretched hands. So I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit. If you hold shift when you drag, it keeps it proportional. So if you kind of get it the way you like it, hold shift, I'm gonna keep moving. So I want her feet kind of towards the bottom and her hands to the edges. There's no real exact science to this. And you also maybe notice that there is a funky kind of fold. Let me grab my hand tool so I can drag this down. At the top here, this is where the two halves of that background were folded together. So you will see this line that maybe doesn't completely line up. This is fine for my purpose because I'm going to race out this section. But if you don't like it, you can always, with the move tool, hover over the corner and you can rotate that to another part of the picture or hide it if you need to. But right now I think this looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna hit the check mark to save it. I can turn off those transform controls if it bothers you, if you don't like seeing it, that's fine. You can always come back to the move tool and turn them back on. Okay, 
Now, uh, we're on the layer two still. I'm going to add a raster mask. In Photoshop, we call it a layer mask. It's the same thing. I'm going to click on this little button that looks kind of like a camera, and it puts a white piece of paper right here. I need my paintbrush for this tool, so I'm going to grab my brush tool, and my brush is super small, so I'm going to make that bigger with my bracket keys. Remember, the right bracket makes that bigger, and I'm going to start painting on this. Now, what you'll see is not, she is not affected because she's on her own layer. But as you're painting, you can see that it's removing things. You can see it on the layer mask. If for any reason I do something that I don't like, I've made a mistake. If I hit the X key, X on the keyboard, I can switch this back and forth. When the white is up, I can add that back in. Think about this. If you're painting white on a white piece of paper, it's just kind of covering it back up. But when I have the black box selected, then I'm able to remove it. So I can just come in here and remove a part of that circle. And you can make that brush bigger or smaller, but I'm just kind of doing it like that. It looks like she's almost grabbing the edges of that like a little cape. And that's it. You're done. You could do, you could do other things with it. But as far as a basic project, this is done. Okay. To save it, you go to file, save. We're not going to save it as a Photoshop document. That would be if you wanted to edit it later in Photoshop, you could, but we're going to export it as a PNG or a JPEG file. So I think right now I'm going to save it as a PNG file and it kind of shows in really big. That's okay. You just say save and it drops it into your downloads and then you can Grab it and share it with me. Can't wait to see what you've done. Good luck.